Good morning, everyone, and uh, I hope you are feeling well and looking after yourselves. This week is Mental Health Awareness Week, and I don't think it could have come at a better time to raise awareness across our communities as we look to return to work and our children uh, to go back to school. Um, we are at a 19-year high, um, according to the National Office of uh, Statistics of self-inflicted deaths um, and that was recorded at the end of 2019. I haven't been able to find reliable data for the, the start of 2020 um, but according to a number of, of reliable sources this looks like it's on the rise in the first few months. This is kind of the reality of, of the situation that we're in. Um, and on Let's Talk FM, we've had great conversations about returning to work from a supplier and, and building point of view and how they need to adapt um, to today's situation. But today, I think we're covering probably the most important part of that return to work process. And we're talking about our people returning to work, our families, our friends, and the people that we love the most. And on that note, I have absolute great pleasure in introducing Jackie Fury. She's a director at Where Work Works Limited. Good morning, Jackie. How are you today? Good morning. Today? Good Hi, morning. Adam. How are you? Very well, thank you. Have you been looking after yourself? I have, yeah. I'm very well, thank you. And thank you for inviting me along today. I'm really looking forward to it. No, thank you for joining us. I mean, very, very quickly, I mean, it, working from home, is there anything that, that you've learned um, <laughs> and you can just tell our, our guests about your experience of, of being at home? Yeah, it's interesting times we're living in, isn't it? I've become an expert in video conferencing overnight, uh, which I'd, I'd used a limited amount of time. But yeah, it's uh, we're all learning new skills and interesting times when you're in a big presentation and the dog's snoring. And yeah. oh, some of those challenges, but yeah, no, it's it's all good though. Yeah, all people, most people understand, new... don't they? <laughs> yeah, You're picking up new technology we didn't know existed beforehand. Um, I think is everyone's experience at the moment of working um, from home. I mean, getting on to the subject of of returning to work. I mean, we've seen a lot in the news at the moment um, about people's um, fears and anxieties being on um, the increase, and you know, what have you seen or what do you think business should be doing at the moment to start breaking down those barriers with their people um, about returning to work? Mm, yeah, well, we're all we're all learning new skills. And I mean, in business, it's always key to communicate effectively with your workforce. And so in this challenging time, it's now even more important that we do that. But we have to find different mediums of how we do that. And obviously, this virtual platform uh, is working really well for a lot of people. Also, um, virtual uh, forums where people have set up sort of social groups within their businesses uh, virtually, so people can still have their coffee mornings and have have their chats about the the film club or the book club and all that kind of thing. But we're we're all learning. But obviously, for each there's sort of three distinct groups in this pandemic and and the workforce. There's those that are have been furloughed, so they've very much sort of been sent home and hopefully they're, they're having keeping in touch days with their with their line managers and team but they're obviously very detached from the business now and they're kind of feeling a little bit out of sorts um there's the groups that are working from home like us and we're continuing to do stuff um albeit in a completely different way to normal um and then there's this, there's those there are a small percentage of people that are still going into the office there's still the facilities managers that are going in to check their buildings are operating correctly and mm -hmm. there's no issues in having to check on things. So, and the, you know, there's still the security guards in, in places. So there are people still having to go to work as well. So it's, it's communicating over those three different groups effectively and each of those have different needs. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I mean, it's, you know, I've, carried on working, my wife were, was furloughed. Um, so yeah, we, we've both been in different situations. Um, mm. Both actually needed different levels of interaction from our business 
and um, keeping us informed in different manners because obviously I'm working every day but working from home and, and obviously she suddenly feels very distant from all her work colleagues and friends. Uh, they set up a WhatsApp group um, which I thought was brilliant. Um, yeah. Just carried on, on talking. Um, you know, I've seen people doing quizzes and, and keeping people sort of Friday night quiz, got nothing to do with work. Just keeping that those sort of social and, and I guess sort of cultural boundaries together. I mean, yeah, one absolutely. Of the, one of the things I'm Sorry. aware of is that you've developed a, a, an e-survey um, that your clients um, can start to use to start engaging their thoughts and feelings with their teams. I mean, talk to us about how that works. Yeah, so um, when when this all hit, obviously we had a bit of a, a hiatus where everybody sort of stood still for a couple of weeks and thought, crikey, what are we going to do? But then, obviously, you know, we've got to carry on. We've got to get back to business. Um, but it's really important to gauge how your workforce are feeling, what's their mood. Um, are they still engaged? Are they feeling good about, you know, working from home or has it been a challenge to them? Um, and really just understanding their current situation. Um, understanding their well-being. Obviously, mental health does suffer when, you, especially if you're working alone, if you're in, a, in in your home on your own and you're getting very little interaction with other people, that can really make you feel low. So it's really understanding people's challenges, um, understanding, you know, a lot of people are homeschooling at the moment. That's a different, another pressure. Um, some people live with the elderly parents and have elderly parents care and obviously working from home can they may not understand that they can't just stop and chat and have a cup of tea at any <laughs> given moment. So it's dealing with all of those different challenges. Um, yeah. And so the e-survey has been designed around how are you doing? How, how has it, this been for you um, during the pandemic? How, how have you coped working from home? Um, have you loved it? Have you hated it? You know, how's, and would you like to continue to do it? Um, it's also around how you're feeling. Are, are you got any anxieties or concerns about returning to the workplace um you know share some of that with us now let's see how we can address all of that and then it's actually about the workplace for the future because I see this very much as a, a step change now a lot of companies have already gone to an agile model um and those that were sort of resistant they've kind of been thrust into this without <laughs> any choice in the matter and from what we've feedback we're getting from our clients actually this is the push they've needed to make the next change in their organization so a lot of people are now deciding what their new their office space will look like um, in the future and actually how much of this can they keep um, yeah it's obvious to look around us to see that you know the, the world is healing pollution is down everything's looking a lot more blue the sea the sky um, all the bird song and all of that good stuff and obviously people are getting to spend an awful lot more time with their families and I think we'd lost a lot of that so there's some real positives out of this pandemic um, in kind of people readdressing their lives and, and simplifying it. Yeah no, I, I agree and we're seeing across the news at the moment that a lot of people aren't reopening offices um, you know it's and I think that's going to be more widespread uh, as we move forward. That Those office spaces will be something that we've probably spoken about for a number of years, will come more collaboration and interaction spaces rather than mm. them a sit at a desk. Um, yeah. But that's not right for everybody, though. So we, we, no. we all have cater for, for the people that don't have the right kind of home setting and do want to be able to go into the offices. So sure. businesses can't just suddenly swing completely the other direction and say, you can all work from home because that might impact some other people's mental health because you know, sometimes going to the office is a release isn't it it's a yeah, way absolutely to and we've been working with a with a company that's a, a media and fashion company and they have a really young demographic and a lot of their staff will be you know straight out of university they might be living in a house share in a bed set um and so really their bedroom is all the space they've got now that isn't conducive to work it could be really depressing and and that they're desperate to get back into the office and have that social part of work which is so important so it, there is not one fits all for this it's very much looking at every business individually um, and understanding what they need um, to <laughs> and this is the one of the difficulties isn't it I mean with all the rumors and the news flying around um, 
you know, it's quite difficult to actually understand the truth uh, of, of what the real situation is and, and how it's impacting people. I mean, so businesses are, are obviously asking people to return to work. I mean, what do you think business should be doing to communicate um, the information of the virus to their, their, their staff? And also, you know, around what impact it had within their working environment. Yeah, have they had any infections come through the door? Yeah, this is going to be a real interesting dynamic part because it starts building those layers of trust. But, you know, is it... I mean, do you think that businesses should be sending out information regarding the virus and, and, and how it's impacting their, their, their locations, their buildings, et cetera, et cetera? Mm. I think the first thing is honesty. I think, you know, you've used a really important word there, trust. And we'll, I think we're going to talk about trust later on in the interview. But um, trust is key to unlocking this. And you really need to now empower and entrust your workforce. Um, and, you know, there, there's been an awful lot of rhetoric and noise around what we should all be doing. Every time I tune into LinkedIn or Facebook, there's some expert giving advice on um, how you should be returning to work, how that should look. There's an awful lot of um, information around the space itself, about the two metres, social distancing, social, social distancing parameter and all of that, which is important, admittedly. But for us, the real important part of this is the people. Um, and returning to work. And my advice is, you know, in the words of Richard Branson, he he once said, don't focus on your competitors, focus on your customers. And then your customers in this situation is your staff. So try to lose some of that noise that's going on out there and everyone's an expert overnight. And actually look at your business, talk to your business and talk to your people. Um, that's really, really key. And um, understand what their challenges are. Because like I said earlier, every business is different. Um, and talk to those internal clients, understand what they need, what they want to keep from this and what they need for the future as well. I mean, this is a uh, message um, where she's agreed with yourself, Jackie. We're all individuals and there. There needs to be different needs uh, and wants for people. Um, so thank you for, for sending that in, um, Victoria. I mean, and this, this comes into it. We're in a, a situation that a lot of leaders and managers will have never experienced, um, either through their own personal feelings, uh, you know, and their views of, of the changes in the ways of working. I mean, how do you sort of see the, the changes that leaders and managers are going to have to make to, to support their people? Because, yeah. again, they're in this situation as well. Um, yeah. We've had a lot of our clients come to us and just ask us about how they manage differently now. Um, so if you just put yourself in their shoes for a moment, they're used to seeing their team. They're used to stopping off and having a chat, picking up on clues if someone's well-being or how their attitude is, how they're doing. Uh, day to day and they're not getting any of that um so it's, it's really difficult to understand that in the virtual landscape um it doesn't let, give you those indicators you'd normally pick up in an off, office environment um so we're, we're helping companies to look at how they manage their staff about keeping in touch more about managing on output as opposed to attendance presenteeism has gone forever thank god <laughs> or I'd like to think so anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, and let, let's um, let's focus on setting measurable targets for staff. Everybody works differently and we're real we're advocates for people to work into their own body clock anyway. So many of us are early birds and others are night owls. And if, if you want to get up at seven o'clock and do the good part of your day, then that's fine. And if you want to start at two in the afternoon and work late into the evening, that's OK, too. As long as the work's done, it doesn't matter when it's done. Um, but it's really important to keep uh, maybe we, we, in this new virtual landscape is to have certain date hours within the day where you are available to your colleagues, your peers and your managers. So you might set a window until 12 or 12 till 2 that you're available for chat or a social coffee break, a virtual one, um, you know, all those sorts of things, just so that you can keep in touch and people know when you're going to be around. So, again, communication is key. Tell people what you're doing. 
tell people what's working for you share share your experiences um and and that that's really really important during this this whole lockdown period no absolutely really <laughs> see um 100 business and they had a presenteeism process in place and obviously that's completely changed overnight and they realized they're working from home um infrastructure wasn't right for their business um uh, and they indicated that they, they thought there was going to be a massive change ahead for them um so fingers crossed it, it, it does filter through because i do yeah. think as we move forward, people work differently and, and so much better when it's slightly more on their terms. I, I think nine to five is, is gone. Um, yes. I think that went years ago, but businesses, mm -hmm. uh, from an operational point of view, still had that as their, their time frame. We know yeah. as specific people, you know, we're 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, you know, we're never off work. No. Really um but it, it's interesting that still some businesses expect them to be in at nine finish at five um, yeah when actually the working hours are, are much longer than that yeah um, and like i said i do think we we'll see a step change now that you know twitter announced last week that they're now their workforce is officially working from home forever um so you know we're going to see some real bold statements coming out and how people are really going to change and lose that nine to five you know way of working yeah, and, and, and quickly, I think this goes on to, to two questions that have, have come through. Victoria, again, thank you very much. I believe one of the, the big benefits of this to the workforce is it has shown the skeptics that we can work remotely, not necessarily from home in the future, but from anywhere. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that that is, is key to this. Uh, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, and that leads on to, to Joshua's question. Um, do you think working from home is here to stay in the post-COVID um, world? And do you think certain organisations, stroke sectors, are more suitable to work from home? Mm. Uh, how will sort of this impact the office space? Yeah, so um, it's great questions. Thank you very much. Um, to talk about how, you know, are we going to continue to work from home? You're absolutely right, Joshua. Not everybody can work from home. Not every industry has that capability. I think if you're service driven as an organisation, um, a lot can be done from home. A lot of these lovely virtual tools that we've got now can really support everything that you need to do. Um, I still think there needs to be a balance. I think you need to be able to uh, still connect and um, feel part of something, go into to, to an office place where you, you are still with your colleagues and peers and there is still some of that office banter um, and you that feeling of belonging um, to a bigger, the bigger picture rather than just sitting at your kitchen table. Um, so, um, yeah, I do think some companies can adapt easier. There's some companies that can't adapt at all, but I don't know if any of you have rung the bank lately, but everybody that's in a call centre seems to be working from home at the moment, which is, you know, I, we've worked with lots of different industries and call centres was always one of the biggest challenges because it was always felt, oh, no, we need to keep it in this massive, great, big, um, office with thousands of call centre people, you know, answering the phone all day long. But actually, they cope really well, the banks and the insurance world and all those sorts of companies. So maybe they'll keep some of that for the future as well. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right, because um, the cost of running a help desk from a physical office space is, is quite high. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And being able to run that virtually um, will have great benefits. Um, and, and, and also, when you think some help desks at a certain point of the year have to grow and reduce in size, depending on demand, um, it can offer that, that great flexibility. They're not always having to adapt and change their space or yeah. having more space. Um, and, and those environments are really, really noisy. And it's, you know, I, I hate to use the analogy battery hen, but it is, can feel a bit like that sometimes. And actually, if you are in a quiet space, you're much more... Um, productive and a much more you're concentrated on what the, the task at hand is and what the the person at the end of the phone is talking to you about so i think it's probably a healthier environment as well yeah and, and, and we're going to move uh, on to trust so i think um i will pick up um jane um for just sent in a, a in a message hi jane 
<laughs> I agree with uh, Victoria. It has uh, forced the trust issue with certain companies. Um, I do miss the office banter, but I am far more productive at home and three hours a day better off due to no car journey. I mean, yeah. I, I, I can't agree with that more. We actually spoke about that before yeah, we we did. On, on air. Um, when my first child was born, one of the, the, the reasons for leaving um, working in central London was um, because of the three hour journey backwards and forwards um, after a long day. And actually working more local, I still managed to be productive for the same amount of time, yeah. but got to put my children, um, well, my child at the time, um, managed to see her at breakfast and go to, to put her to bed, which just massively changed. Um, yeah. The, the way I felt and, and the way my wife felt around the support that she had. And this mm. is it. it, it it's, you know, with, with the pandemic, with returning to work, with the fear and anxiety that, that we've got, you know, through us returning to work, and we can even put this through to our children returning to, to school. Trust is being, the word trust is being used um, a lot. And at, and at the moment, it's changing. The information we get is, is changing so so quickly. And unfortunately, the more we seem to be learning about the virus every day, um, the learnings we have seem to be making the virus worse, um, not better, especially if you're listening to, to, to some of the, the media. You know, and this is going to be the challenge for for businesses is is to rebuild that trust for for the workforce. I mean, how do you think that that they should start to rebuild that trust uh, with their staff and their and their teams when they're asking them to come back into the workplace? Yeah, trust is as we said earlier is the key to unlocking the success of the of the new workplace, if you like. And um, a lot of companies are very good at doing it already. They empower their staff and they allow them to work in a way that suits them and that they manage on output. And, and everybody else is now having to catch up pretty fast. Um, I think a workforce that's actually trusted is much more productive and engaged and fulfilled as a workforce. Um, it's a well-known change management practice that a workforce that's actually valued and rewarded um, uh, and that they react more highly to recognition than they do monetary reward. If you was to say to someone, you know, you're doing a really, really great job, I'm going to promote you to the, the next level up, or I'm going to give you a hundred pound bonus, actually they'll take the promotion and the recognition over the money ever, all the time. And a good example of that is our lovely NHS workers at the moment. Um, as we know, they're not the most well paid workforce, but actually, they do really really well because one they're in a position of trust people trust them you know people's lives are on the line here um their work is meaningful they're valued by their patients and the families of those patients um and actually they get that recognition when they see uh, the likes of you and me leave the hospital healthy and fit they're, that's such a reward for them in itself so um you know they're doing amazing work right now and, and you can see that the 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 when they're clapping people out from, yeah. from recovery, um, especially from the, the ICU units and, and everything else. It, it, it's amazing to see that the, the care and attention, but also, you know, they're applauding, you know, them, themselves and, and, and their great feeling they're getting from just watching that person leave is, is definitely going to be worth more more than, than any money that, that you yeah, can Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think if you can be open and honest and empower people, that equals trust. Yeah. And this kind of, I guess, goes on to, to, to the whole process that, that we've been speaking about with regards to, you know, one of the, the, the nice things about the government guidance, it started with talk to your people and yeah. in building the plan in returning to, to, your, to, your, to your business. And, and to see that at the top of all the guidance, I thought that was, was brilliant. But, you know, returning to work is just a section of what we're doing. Businesses have to start building a whole lot more support mechanisms in, in place. Mm. Uh, this is for the people returning to work. This is for the people working from home. This is people on furlough that we've spoken about. And, and as Joanne has just um, sent through, you know, another question is, how do you suggest companies monitor the mental health of those working from home? Solitude doesn't suit everyone, does it? And it doesn't. There's lots of mechanisms that businesses have to start thinking about. 
Um, yeah. What would you like to see them put in place to, to support now such a diverse, even more diverse section of, of their mm. work? So it's really important to have those one-to-ones with your manager every week um, or, or, or more uh, regular than that if you can afford the time. But at least once a week you should be touching um, – catching up with your your team and on an individual basis ask them how they're coping um obviously you know your mental health can suffer in in this situation um it's yeah so yeah that, that's one important way of staying in touch is just to to keep keep asking the question and listening to what they're saying to you as well uh, uh, let's much part that allows them to understand what every individual needs um, and creating the workplace for each of those individuals as well yeah. because everybody is is very different on the, the way they think and feel uh, and what impacts them from yeah. a physical and a mental point of view so I do what, think what, it's um, you're right but one of the key mechanisms is that that what, contact what, and communication what's yeah. worked really well for one of our clients had I mean is that they've they have a lot of virtual forums, so they do have a cinema club, they have a book club. It's all virtual now. They, they used to meet in person, now they're doing it all online. But they also have a health, uh, a mental health forum. The people that have had struggles in the past or are currently going through struggles, they have a very private, um, anonymised forum where they can just share how they're feeling and people that have been through the same things can share how they, they cope with certain um, areas. So... I think if you can create a virtual support network, that is equally as important in this time. Yeah, agreed. And we have seen a huge amount of investment in that area, which is which is brilliant. Um, you know, and, and this goes on to to, to uh, your role as um, chair of the Workplace SIG for yes. the Institute of Workplace and Management. Uh, great role. Congratulations on it. And, and Thank you. I'm glad that we have you in place um, looking at it. You know, they've played a big part, I, I'm going to assume, in feeding out information. So what guidance and, and, and have they produced? Um, what support are they giving FM? And, and what can FMs get, get hold of from the okay. Institute um, to support them on their journey? Yeah, so as we said, there's an awful lot of thought leadership out there, lots of guidance, but I would urge you to go to the IWFM's website. Um, they've written two uh, guidance papers at the moment, um, one is about managing the impacts of the COVID uh, disaster and also uh, the next one is about this whole returning to work topic. They've also run a series of webinars um, and episode five is actually going live tomorrow at 12 till 1 um, and that's on the subject of planning the return to work, what are the practicalities? Um, and our deputy chair from the workplace, Sig Simone Fenton Jarvis, will be appearing on that and uh, giving her experience that where she works at RICO, what they've done worldwide, because obviously they've been through the pandemic in China um, and Thailand, all of those places, and now they're coming back from that. So they can give their um, experience on how they've coped and how they've reopened. Um, so if you, can, if you can go to the www.iwfm.org.uk, you can look up the webinars there and all the guidance notes. There's some really good stuff on there. Uh, the uh, the videos on there um, to access from the previous discussions, or, or are they just live discussions? Um, I think they are, Adam, but I don't entirely know. <laughs> Very naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get sold off. <laughs> but um, yeah, go and check it out. I mean, there's lots of resources on there that can really help you through the the pandemic. Um, no. oh. And, and as um, a SIG, we're working closely with the technology and people SIG just to understand the whole, how it's affecting everybody. And we're going to come up with some new guidance notes that's coming out soon and also more webinars on the on the whole returning to work. Um, we've just had a, 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 another message in. Um, hopefully I'll say this right from Pack the Hammer um, on here. And the, the supervisory role will have significantly changed with the new work ethic. Isn't there a risk of managers in the role feeling undervalued and not, and even not required? How can we manage that? I think it's their role is even more important now than it was because a lot of managers uh, would manage on, on that visual presence, knowing, seeing people sat at their desk doing their work or in the production line. 
um, creating their work. But now it's more important that they have that they're that intermediary between the most senior management in the business um, and the people um, on the front line. And they need to be active, they need to be proactive, and they need to really change um, and reskill themselves. Actually, how how they manage a virtual team. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's going to be a. This is where we went back to that that previous question. There, you know, leaders are into a, a completely new space, aren't they? And yeah. yeah it's very easy. Um, you know, facilities managers have, have got some experience uh, around this because they'll probably have quite a dispersed team, um, but also an office team. As we know, managing people on the road is is very different to managing people that are sat next to you in the office. Mm. Um, you just don't have that same communication and, and, and the word earlier banter so, so you build a much yeah. easier relationship with people that you see every single day um so i would i would look at it sort of in that way you've got to actually try harder uh with the people mm. who are, are, are more remote to yourself you've got yeah. to put the time and the effort into the communication with them um as you say those those weekly one-to-ones yeah, if you miss the, that with somebody that sat next to you, the impact is probably a lot smaller than it would be if you missed that one-to-one -one time with somebody working remotely from you. So yeah. it's, it's prioritizing that time and making sure that you, as a manager and a leader, put that effort into each individual. Yeah. Company, isn't it? I think I think they're more important than ever at the moment. And I don't know about you. In the past, I've had some particularly poor managers. Um, and my one-to-one -one was always the first thing to get cancelled. And actually, that needs to now be the top of everybody's priority list. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and this is the, the you know, you're, you're speaking to your clients um, every day. Um, you're, they're coming and asking you um, for some advice and, and, and guidance. What type yeah. of questions and, and what type of advice are they asking you for at the moment? What's, what's sort of like the top three things that they're coming and, and speaking to you about? Yeah, so yeah, we, we've come a bit of a <laughs> a forum of information. I, I, you know, we was always that anyway. But people have really come to us during this um, the pandemic and asking us for our advice and what really what they should be doing. So a lot of it's about their approach. How should they be addressing uh, the change? Um, a lot of it's sanity checking. They're thinking: Is it correct? Would this work? People, some people are coming to us about the physical space, introducing one-way systems, looking at opening hub spaces, sorry, not actually, um, actual hub spaces outside of London so that people aren't having to travel into London. And just sanity checking some of their thinking on all of that. Advice around social distancing. Um, for us, the desk is relatively safe environment because you can control the hygiene level. If you've got people that are at one desk and they're, they're socially distanced, it becomes the toilets, the tea points, the lifts, the the reception area, all of those central circulation spaces that are the real um, critical areas that need to be managed much more vigorously. And there's lots of solutions around that at the moment. One, um, one I heard of the other day is they've devised a, a red, green and amber sensor for the toilets. And so... Yeah. You know, and then and the cleaners are going in kind of every time somebody goes in or every half hour and cleaning through thoroughly. So we're having to be quite ingenious with our approach, but we've got to think of everything right now. Yeah, I have to say, <laughs> it's a, um, traffic flow uh, installation at, at toilets, and and l let's be perfectly honest, if it gives people the comfort uh, that um, it, it's a safe way to manage the environment, then I think it, it, it's the right thing to do because. Let's be honest, it, it's through those blocked doors where they've got no windows and no access that you're going to have pinch points as well. Um, yeah. you know, so it, 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 we've got to really rethink it, haven't you? And this is why you've got to understand people movement. And this is why you've got to understand the people's needs to be able to build the right risk assessment, to be able to build then anything that can mitigate that risk. You know, if, you, if you've not done your, your analysis correctly in the first yeah. place and, and done that with your team, the trust yeah. can't be um because they're going to come into a workplace that they haven't helped redesign and in there might be inherent risks that, that they feel haven't been taken into consideration which breaks that trust um before we've even started mm. um yeah you know, we've just had a quick one in from from hannah uh thank you hannah um what Hi. advice would you give to managers to help their staff 
that have been furloughed, going back to work after not working for a long period of time? I mean, it's a real key question, isn't it? We're going back from isolation, going back into the workplace um, with extra and heightened concerns and anxiety as well. What, what is it you feel the managers can do to support them now? Yeah. Um, so thank you, Hannah. Great question. I, I think I'm hoping that you've had some interaction with your your company since you've been furloughed. Um, they really should be keeping touch with you, keeping you up to date on um, things that they're doing to uh, focus on returning to work, how that's going to look and feel. And also when it does come to that point that you do come off a furlough, I think they should really be easing you back into the workforce. It shouldn't just be an immediate switch of the, um, flick of the switch. They should be allow you still to work from home a few days a week, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and to ease you back into work because you've been out of now out of that normal routine for for months and I don't know about you but after two weeks on holiday I don't remember the passwords to my login so how how we're all going to cope after two months three months of this I don't know but really it should be an eased approach and and you should be, be fully supported um, and equally you should have the chance to voice any concerns or anxieties you have um, and then respond accordingly to that. Yeah, and, and I mean, we're, we're trying to get through all of the questions because we're, we're, we're running out of, of time. Um, so uh, we, we've had another one in from Joanne. Uh, do you think uh, working from home would eliminate workplace equality, uh, discrimination, bullying, etc.? Would redundancy be more performance related? Gosh, OK. So, yeah, I mean, this is a new world we're in. Um, I'd like to think the physical environment would lose some of those um, prejudices that we have, you know, and lose the, the equality things and all of that. So, if it can, it should, if it should work in the physical space, there's no reason why it wouldn't work in the virtual space. Um, with regards to redundancy, um, yes, I guess if you're not performing in your role or your role becomes redundant, I guess the same rules that apply now would apply within the virtual environment. Um, I'm not an expert in that field, I have to say. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's uh, a case of having to wait and see. I think we just need to get back to normal first. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 trying to, to to understand the parameters i mean one of the the, the real things is is redundancy during this time um over the next couple of months is going to be a real thing for people yeah um, of course and in working um relationships and, and in some cases you know when when the businesses are deciding to shut their offices um and i've heard of a few very recently and, and won't be returning back in and they're going to be supporting working from home you know, I, I do wonder what conversations they've had with all of their team to understand how that's going to work for them um, before they've made such a big announcement because that yeah. can heighten the anxiety of somebody going, well, I'm not, I, I don't have the space to work from home. I, I do yeah. live in a small house. I do have uh, a larger family here. It, it, it's it, All of those things, they're, they're great comments to make um, and they're great aspirations, I think, for all of us to try and achieve, but they've got to be done in such a sensitive manner at the moment because yeah, it's around us so quickly that piling on more change just breeds more fear and, and anxiety if it's not um, collaborative and it's not done in a, in a, in a, a, a friendly manner and mm. with everyone being able to, to um, impact those de decisions as well. I mean, so, so very quickly before we come to, to an end, thank you everyone for, for, for joining us today. I mean, What's the top three things, top three pieces of advice you'd give your employers and then the top three um, piece of advice you'd give your, the employees during this time? Okay, so um, start with employers. Take time to listen. Oh. Um, Are you there, Jackie? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, I've frozen for a minute. It looks like... Oh, hello, I'm back. Oh, I'm back. back. I'm back. Sorry about that. It must be the Wi-Fi. <laughs> so top ten, uh, sorry, top tips for the employers. Take time to listen. Uh, first and foremost, fo focus uh, on your people. Unfortunately, guys uh, and, and everyone, it looks like that we've lost Jackie. I don't know. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, hello. 
No, no, we can't no. hear you. Oh, um, what a shame. Okay, it sounds like you're there, so carry on. It might be the connection okay. by the end then. Okay, so just to sum up then, so employers take time to listen, focus on your people first and your place second. Um, don't follow the trends, do what's right for you as a business. No need to reactions, think it out, take your time. We haven't all got to go back overnight. We've got time to do this. It's obviously, some companies do have to create things, so there is a physical environment. But if you have the luxury of being able to work from home, gradually return back to the workplace and ask your business and the staff what they need. So that's, that's my advice for employers. Um, really, for the employees, stay engaged, get involved. If if you are at home and there are virtual networks going on and forums, um, please get involved. It will make you feel part of something bigger. Um, pick up the phone and have a chat with if Fred who used to sit opposite you all day long. You know, there's nothing to stop you doing that. Stay in touch with your colleagues, your friends, your peers. After all, work is such a social part of our lives. But that's all been switched off overnight. So there's no reason you can't continue that. Um, raise any concerns and issues you've got with your management, with your direct line manager. Uh, voice what you want and please, please, please say what you don't want for the future. Um, and if you've any part of this you, you've enjoyed, then let's try and keep that and carry on. Um, and let's try and heal the planet at the same time. It's really important. No, uh, agree, Jackie. Sorry, everyone, that, that looked like my internet had a, a poor poor connection for, for a second there. Okay. Um, Jackie, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really insightful, um, yeah. really interesting conversation. Um, no, thank you very much. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I hope I haven't gone on too much. And um, yeah, thanks for all the questions and all the support. It's lovely to see so many familiar names coming up in the questions uh, chat. So thank you very much, everyone. No, 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 definitely thank you for joining us and taking your time out to, to, to get out to, to the people that are listening and watching today. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, we will be back next week. Um, look after yourselves, take care, and see you all very soon. Bye, Stay everyone. Safe. Bye. Bye.